Welcome to this video on getting started with Microsoft Loop Workspaces. So I'm going to give you an overview of the Loop Workspaces. You can use these per project or with initiatives or things that you are doing. The formatting is super simple because the components have been designed for you. So it's really, really effortless. You don't have to worry about how things are presented on the screen, especially if you're sharing these with people, higher ups that you want to impress. You can use page templates. You can create customized templates as well within the workspaces. So you've got lots to play around with. And Microsoft Loop works really well with all the other Microsoft applications as well. So it's great to start looking at and having a go. And these workspaces are set up almost like a OneNote because you can have them with sub pages. So let's go ahead and have a look at what's on our screen right now. I can see loop in the top left hand corner. If I want to ever get back to this screen, I'm just going to click that option and I've got the create new. And then I've got some menu items down the left hand side. Thinks I'm in the evening, which is very interesting because I'm definitely not in the mean evening. But you can see a getting started one there that wasn't created for me, but I'm just going to click on it so that we can have a look. And when I do, you can see, like I said, it's a bit like OneNote because you have all of your sections and pages down the left. And then you can see I've got all of the detail nicely designed for me in there. And you can see those sections have sub pages within them that you can create really nicely and have different bits of information in them. Just like the rest of the Microsoft applications, the three dots will allow you to make changes. They'll take you to a menu. You can see that I've got new sub pages. I can open it. I can rename it. I can save that page as a template. So remember I said right at the beginning already, you can create your own custom templates to use across your workspace and things like that, which is quite useful. And you can also click and drag and move them around as well. So if I click and hold on this one, you can see the line where that appears. So you can see very quickly there that this one has been created for me in advance and it's got loads of content, but let's start from scratch. Let's go back to that initial page and let's create a new one. So I'm not going to do a pages and ideas. I want to do a new workspace. So top left hand corner, create new, new workspace. And I'm going to do this for Project Paris. And then I can pop in an icon as well if I want to. So I can select an icon or an emoji type piece, but I'm not going to do that one. I can share the space or I can skip the step and invite people later on. So if I want to build my workspace and then I want to pull people into it, then I would leave that blank and share it at a different point in time and come back to it. So let's click on continue right now. And then it's asking if I want to add files to my workplace. So it's trying to be clever and help me out and find anything that might be relevant to this workspace that I'm building. So you can see on the right hand side there any files that it's found. And you can see here on the left, I can describe my project or what I'm going to be doing. So I don't have to do that. but So what I'm going to do is just create the workspace. So like I said, it, it visualizes very much like OneNote. So if you've used OneNote before, then you'll hopefully get really comfortable with this. Nice and easy to work with. I can see my in the middle towards the left, I can see my hierarchy, my pages, my sections. And then on the right hand side, you can see what I've built. So I do have a recycle bin at the bottom if I want to get rid of anything. But I can see I've got a page here. And when I hover, I've got the option to create a new page. So let's just create a new page. So I can see I've got multiple ones in there and I can start moving them around. Three dots and rename and style. So let's do an introduction. And you can obviously name these however you want and update that. And let's just do this one as well. Let's do this as... Let's do this as a project overview. And click update. 
And now you can see that information does filter through into the right hand side. In this project overview one, let's do a three dots and let's do a sub page. So you can see sub pages are coming in, they're indented in a little bit and we can rename this one as well to do people and roles and update. So you can see how very quickly I can build these out. If I put icons next to them, then obviously they'll look a little bit like the getting started one. But if you want it to be looking a bit more professional and clean, then you might just want to do it how I've done it here. And you can see I can open and close those sections so I can hide those sub pages if I need to. So nice and simple and easy to work with. I'll talk about sharing in a little bit, but remember down the bottom there, save pages as a template. So let's go into project overview and I'm just going to click on that cross to close the sidebar just because it just gets in my way sometimes. You can even close the tabs as well. So let's collapse the tabs and I can now just see what's going on in my page. I can obviously open them back up if I need to. So there's nothing in this project overview page, but what you'll notice at the bottom is you've got some options. You've got a blank page, then you've got some options, some different templates that you can go and use really quickly. And you can even go to the template gallery. So let's go for project planning on this one. Now, if I scroll down, you can see what this one's going to look like. Now, just because you're using this template doesn't mean you can't edit it. You can't remove sections and add things in. It just gives you a starting point. So you can see how it's been built really nicely. It looks super visual, looks super clean and professional as well. And you can see what's going on. Now, if you notice, when I clicked on that template, it does say include content and you can toggle that on or off. So what you can do is you can include content just to help you understand what the sections are about and give you an example to start working with. Because sometimes even though you've got sections in there and you've got bits created, you've still got lots of blank in there. And it's hard to get started when there's lots of blank. So putting fake content in there can sometimes really help you out. So you can see I've got loads of examples here as to what is expected. So if this is pretty new to you, if you are still learning about this and you want to really, really get a little bit of help, then including the content might work for you. And you can obviously delete all of that content, so do not even worry. Because it's just fake to get you started. Now, if you want to use this template, then click on use this template and it will lock that in place. I have left the content on. So now this is in my project planning page. And I can now go in here and select any of this content and do what I want to do with it. Now, you've got some basic formatting options. When you click on any text, you can see it appears there. I've got bold, italic, underline, etc. Different headings and also three dots with more options in there. So I do have lots of formatting to play around with, but it comes through really nicely anyway. All of these are separate components and they come through really nice. Now you'll notice on the left-hand side, you've got six dots. And if I click on it, you can see I've got different options to play around with that component. I can delete it. I can copy a link to here, or I can create a loop component from that information and share it elsewhere so that people can feed into it in here. So it really, really works well with the rest of Microsoft. I also have the speech bubbles where comments can be added and things like that. So once you start sharing this with people and people start working on this together, you can use that bit of functionality, which is really nice. So you can just go in there and edit what you need to do, take off what you need to take. Let's get rid of that information. And then you can add your people in and get rid, obviously, of what you need to do. And things like this, if you've got this loop component here, you can add new rows in and create more information in there. So it's not stuck. You are not static into what. And this is really great, this one as well. Assignments, so you can see what people are doing or what things need to happen. 
goals and milestones is your task section. So these tasks, when they're linked to someone, will show up in their planner, will show up in their to-do and everything else. So really nice and really easy to work with. So let's just go back to the rest of this content. And I'll get to it that way. So opening up that sidebar and reopening it, I can see I'm in the different pages. Let's just go into a page that doesn't have anything in. So I can just show you a few bits about creating that page. So let's do this one. And let's do a blank page so you can see what's going on here. So if I want to insert any of those components, you can see as soon as I start clicking on it, I can just start typing or I can use the slash command to bring up a drop down list of all of the different elements that I might want to add. And these are all formatted really nicely, like the template that you just saw. So you can work really, really nicely with these. You can see I've got all the different elements. I've got text styles and stuff, quotes. I've got templates that I can add in. I've got communication or emoji pickers, media, so I can add in videos and images and stuff link to different Microsoft applications and codes and all sorts of stuff. So let's just keep it nice and simple. Let's just add in a checklist. So you can see a checklist and you can just keep adding those into it. And then if I click further down, again, I can just slash and then add anything else that I want to add in and keep going. I can put dividers in. I can define my text style. Um, let's just pop something in here. Let's do a Kanban board. So you can see a Kanban board. And if I have these dots here, what I can also do is click and drag to reorder this stuff, which is really great as well, because these are all separate components. So they can all be clicked and dragged around, which is good to work with. So if you do want to create your pages from scratch, then you can design them while you're working and move those pages around. What I haven't done before previously is gone to the top right hand corner. So let's just have a look at what's in the top right hand corner. So if I click on those three dots, you can see I've got the print and PDF and I can also see version history. So I can export this and I can have a look at that version history as well, which is really great for multiple people are working on a workspace at the same time. So you've got some really nice options in there. You can also delete it if you want to delete this workspace. If you've just been playing around with it and you just want to delete the whole thing and start again with a fresh one because you know how it works now. And I would always suggest anyone trying to learn a new system or application, just dive into it and have a go and click on things and create something and see what works best for you. But I also want to show you the share options. So in the share options, you can share the workspace. So once you've created something, if this is for a project or a team plan or something, then share the workspace with the relevant people. If you want someone to have access to a page within the workspace only, you can do that. And you can also give people access to the loop component as well, if you want to. So you can give different levels of access. People can have access to the components only, the page only, or the whole workspace. So you can define what your sharing option should be. So there's loads of flexibility. And remember, you can copy the links to those different components because each one of these things that I just added is a component. That Kanban board is a component. That list of tasks was a component in the previous template. And they can be shared in other parts of Teams and it will dynamically... Um, Microsoft, sorry, not just Teams, other parts of Microsoft, so OneNote and things like that, and it will dynamically update. So this is a tool that really brings everything together and allows you to work in different parts of Microsoft, but pulls it all into one place. And like I said at the beginning, you can use this for projects, team initiatives, things like that. And if you've used OneNote, it works really, really similar and really easy, but it's much more dynamic and interesting and visually much more well designed because you've got all of that, all of these components just pre-built into the system. So all the technical things, all the design for is already being done for you. So you can just use it to manage your projects, to manage your team 
however you want to. So again, another one to really play around with and have a go at. Hopefully I've given you some top tips here, some things to think about, but everyone's workspace will be different. Everyone's project, everyone's team setup will be very different. And what you have here is the ability to use templates to create your own templates or to just create something from scratch that you can use yourself or that you can share with other people. So come in and have a go. Let us know how you get on in the comments and see if Loop will work for you and Loop Workspaces. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and let me know what videos you'd like me to record.